Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the Arturia Mini Brute V tutorial course. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Steiner Parker filter within the synthesizer. Now, this Steiner Parker filter is a 12 dB per octave slope based on the Steiner Parker Synthicon synthesizer. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this filter is that it's gonna react differently depending on its input signal. So if the input signal is rather low, then we get a nice clean sound. However, we get a dirtier sound with hotter input signals to the filter. Now, within this filter, we have a few different options. We have a low pass filter, we have a band pass filter, we have a high pass filter, and finally we have a notch filter. So the main knob that we need to know about is going to be the cutoff. Now, this is a very important one, which is probably why it's the only orange knob on the synthesizer. So the cutoff is gonna be the point in the frequency spectrum where the attenuation begins. However, if we're gonna be in notch mode or bandpass mode, the cutoff is gonna be the center point. So right now we just have a saw wave up here. So let's take a listen and see how all those high frequencies are gonna start getting filtered out. So to the right of the cutoff knob, we have the resonance knob. Now the resonance will accentuate the point of the cutoff in the frequency spectrum. So let's do another filter sweep and increase the resonance here. So that spot down over here, right here. So right below the cutoff knob, we have something called the envelope amount, which is gonna be the settings down here for the filter envelope. So if we want a little bit of modulation on this cutoff, we're gonna be giving it some depth and then adjusting this envelope down over here. So for example, we can bring down this cutoff maybe somewhere right here, maybe give it some resonance so we have something like this. But maybe we want some movement so we can just turn this to the right here for some depth. Now the speed at which this is decaying is controlled by this decay slider. Now if we want this effect to happen a little bit slower once we hit a key, then we can increase the attack. And then we can change the sustain to see where it wants to sustain at. So maybe we want it to stop right about here. Or pick a spot that we like. Maybe right there. And maybe we want a little bit of release and we bring this up here. We won't really notice anything because our amp releases all the way down, so we need to bring this up here. And there you have it. So next up we have KBD tracking or keyboard tracking. Now this concept is rather simple to understand. If we brought our cutoff maybe down over here to around 1K, whatever note that we press, that filter is not going to move. It's gonna be stuck at a little bit over 1K and it's gonna stay there. However, if we go higher up on our keyboard and maybe we want a little bit more frequencies to go through, then we can increase our keyboard tracking. So essentially, the higher notes that we play, the more this filter knob is going to slightly open up more and more. So as I mentioned before, we have a couple different filter types. We have a low pass, which is what we were looking at. It's letting the low frequencies pass through. Then we have a band pass, which is letting a band of frequencies pass through. And with our cutoff, it's like the center point. We're kind of choosing a certain area of the frequencies that we'd like that we want to pass through to the filter. So maybe we like this tonality right here. We can add a little bit of resonance. Next up, we have a high pass, which is letting the high frequencies pass through. So if we have our resonance all the way down, all the way at the top, it's gonna be a little bit backwards because now we're cutting the low frequencies. So we've had our knob all the way down here and now we can decide how much of the low end that we would like to cut. Then we have a notch filter, which basically is just a little notch within the frequency spectrum. 
And we can accentuate that as well with the resonance. Okay, last but not least, we have this knob here called Brute Factor. So what the heck does this thing do? So according to the manual, this knob simulates taking the amplified headphone output signal and feeding it directly back into the filter. Now this can produce very unique tones and results, especially at extreme values where sidebands can also occur. So with that being said, let's take this thing here for a spin. So yeah, that gets pretty crazy pretty fast. I highly recommend to play around with this knob. There is a, a very sweet spot for the most part within this knob that you can really find a certain kind of texture or timbre to your patch. Like right there seems pretty cool for this one. And keep in mind that's with no effects or modulation. All right, guys, that does it for the filter section and this video. So keep in mind, this filter section is rather simple as is most of the synthesizer, but you get a very aggressive, almost unique sound using this synth. So definitely try it out, have some fun with it and make some cool patches. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.